where local news comes first. TV3, KATC, Lafayette. And now, from the heart of Acadiana, Action 3 News at 10. It's being called a major victory for President Clinton. The U.S. House tonight has passed NAFTA. Also tonight, a dramatic breakthrough in diagnosing and treating cancer. And we begin our special series, Hair Today, Gone Tomorrow, Tonight. How do people feel about thinning hair? Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Bill Leger. And I'm Deborah Pooler. It's a hard-earned triumph tonight for President Clinton. The North American Free Trade Agreement has passed the U.S. House, and Republicans provided a majority of the votes. The president had a cushion of 16 votes. ABC's Lisa Stark has the latest tonight from Washington. The president didn't just eke out a victory, he managed to win by a comfortable margin. On this vote, the yeas are 234, the nays are 200, and the bill is passed. Hey. The House debated for eight hours. Opponents saying Mr. they Speaker, spoke for the working people who stood to lose their jobs if NAFTA passes. That the work of America is still done by the people who pack a lunch, who punch a clock, and who pour their heart and their soul into every paycheck, and we can't afford to leave them behind. Supporters urge Congress to show courage and pass NAFTA in the face of strong opposition from Ross Perot and the labor movement. Do not sacrifice the jobs of tomorrow to the fears of today. A vote for NAFTA represents the best traditions of our past and the best hope for our future. This has been one of the most divisive issues to come before the House. Many are already extending olive branches. We must start healing our wounds starting tomorrow. After the hard-fought battle in the House, the president is expected to easily win in the Senate. This victory is a welcome send-off for the president as he heads to Seattle for trade talks with Japan and other Pacific Rim nations, giving him extra clout as he pushes those countries for free and fair trade. Lisa Stark, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Now, as expected, all but two of Louisiana's representatives voted in favor of the trade agreement. Our state's Democrats lined up this way. Cleo Fields voted no, while Jimmy Hayes and William Jefferson said, well, they voted no, and Billy Tozan voted yes, I'm sorry, Billy Tozan also voted no. On the Republican side, Richard Baker, Bob Livingston, and Jim McCreary all voted yes. He, two of the representatives voting tonight issued these statements. My constituents' jobs and their livelihoods are non-negotiable, Mr. Speaker, and cannot be jeopardized. I cannot possibly fulfill my responsibility to my constituents by voting for NAFTA. A sugar cartel exists internationally, smaller than the oil cartel in Geneva. It controls sugar prices. This NAFTA could destroy the sugar industry. I urge a no vote. Now some business people here in Acadiana tonight were watching the NAFTA vote with growing interest. Cy Brown is the president of Bruce Foods and has been vocal in his support of NAFTA. He believes it will open up Mexican markets for his products and that overall U.S. businesses will gain new customers. But some people disagree. John Zimmer, president of a trash compactor company in New Iberia, says that NAFTA will only hurt the American economy. They want to raise the Mexican standard of living on our back. Well, we can only afford so much. I mean, we're working as hard as we can now. If you give our manufacturing jobs away, what's going to happen? Well, the biggest benefit of NAFTA is going to be access to Mexico, which means new markets, new customers, and the ability for our company, as well as other companies like us in all industries in the United States, to gain new customers outside of the United States in Mexico. Now the Senate will vote on the trade pact. The president will need at least 51 votes to get it passed. The Senate is expected to approve NAFTA possibly later this week. Now there will be more NAFTA tonight, including the president's comments on Nightline that's one, after, one hour after our newscast. With student discipline problems on the rise throughout Acadiana schools, the Lafayette Parish School Board is looking for solutions. One of the items on tonight's agenda was a resolution to ask the state legislature to pass laws that would freeze a student's driver's license if he or she was expelled from school. 
Now, even though board members appear to be in favor of the resolution, adoption will have to wait until at least December 1st, while discussions continue with state lawmakers. One resolution, though, that did pass, however, was one for the arts, commendation of the Acadiana Symphony and the Symphony Women's League for helping elementary students embrace the world of classical music. Some Acadiana parents are upset with their school board. Some parents in Iberia Parish think the school is making a big mistake by not renewing the contract of Superintendent Dave Cavalier. Cavalier, seen here, has been school superintendent in Iberia Parish for eight years. Parents at tonight's school board meeting spoke out against the letting go of Cavalier. Uh, I firmly believe in the eight years that he's been here, he's done an outstanding job. Uh, we probably have one of the better parishes by far in the state for public education. And that's something we must keep in mind. The school board is not commenting on the release of Cavalier. A new poll out tonight indicates more than half of the people in the state think Governor Edwards is doing a bad job. When asked who they would vote for in a hypothetical primary, former Governor Buddy Romer was the choice of 30% of the respondents. State Treasurer Mary Landrieu was next with 17.3%, and then Edwards with 16.6%. Former Representative David Duke came in fifth behind Secretary of State Fox McKithen. Edwards and McKithen are the only two who have formally declared their candidacy. Tonight, former Governor Romer said he has not decided. Oh, it's too early. I, you know, it's been two years since I've served as governor, and I was honored. I've taught at Harvard. I'm back in Baton Rouge now with my own company. I'm active in educational things and some political things. We'll see. I love the state. I think we need to make a change. If I'm the right person, I'll run. If there's somebody better, I'll support him or her. Rummer was in New Iberia as the featured speaker for the Chamber's Outstanding Civic Service Award Banquet. Mr. Glenn Conrad was selected for the Civic Service Award. Conrad is known for his many contributions to the area. Some say his most significant accomplishment was documenting the history of New Iberia in several publications. He's published 15 books on Louisiana-related topics. And since 1965, Mr. Conrad has been on the faculty of USL, where he serves as director of the Center for Louisiana Studies. Congratulations to Mr. Conrad tonight for this honor. A local attorney breaking into the political scene tonight launched his campaign for a city court judge. Peter Piccioni held a red beans and rice fundraiser to gain support for his campaign. Piccioni says as city court judge, his main objective would be combating juvenile delinquency and educating young offenders. The special election to fill Judge Collie Saloon's seat is expected in March, with qualifying beginning in January. Four other candidates have also announced their intentions to run. And turning to weather, Nelson Robinson is standing by in our weather center with the latest weather. Nelson? And I had to have aspirations of giving you the weather. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, well, a rather cool night. It's going to be rather cool for the next couple of nights. We've got some high clouds around, but nothing that will produce precipitation. We'll talk about the Las Vegas area as well, as most of the Cajuns in this part of the country head in that direction. That's coming up in a bit. But as you start your day tomorrow, I'll be looking for a few high clouds around. Fair skies and cool. Temperature around 47 degrees, no rain chances. We'll talk about any rain chances at all coming up in the five-day, along with your forecast in just a couple minutes. All right, thank you, Nelson. Prolonging the lives of cancer patients, that's next in medical news. Also tonight, we'll tell you why these Iraqis are trying to stake their claim over Kuwait. You're watching Action 3 News at 10 with Bill Leger, Deborah Terrabil Pooler, Meteorologist Nelson Robinson and Mac McCullough with sports. This is where local news comes first. Experience. More than 35 years. Depend upon it. At DiMaggio, Wright, Morrow, and Roy. Working hard to win for you. Hello, South Louisiana. Somali clan leader Bahama Farah Adid is no longer a wanted man. That story tops our world report. The United Nations has formally called off its hunt for Adid. The Security Council passed that resolution, but did authorize an investigation into the killings of more than 70 UN peacekeepers since June. Adid has been held responsible for many of those deaths. Iraq tonight has restated its claim over Kuwait. While tensions continue between the two, several hundred Iraqis staged their biggest protest in months. They planted the Iraqi flag on Kuwaiti soil to protest a Kuwaiti security trench being built along the border. 
and about 250 Iraqi farmers threw stones at Kuwaiti workers digging the trench. The Lenin Museum, a shrine to the father of the Soviet Union, has been closed. The closure comes after President Boris Yeltsin ordered the buildings turned over to a new city legislature. The museum closure is the first tangible step towards removing Lenin's embalmed body from its Red Square mausoleum. Three teens charged with murdering three eight-year-old children were in court in Tennessee amid jeers from onlookers. A psychologist testified that a 17-year-old charged in the murders has an IQ of 72 and has trouble distinguishing fantasy from reality. But the judge ruled the teen was competent to stand trial. For many years, the future has held the promise of a dramatic breakthrough in diagnosing and treating cancer patients. With the help of genetic technology, a powerful new study suggests the future is now. Medical reporter Kathleen Quinn explains. The uh, revolution that's taking place in the genetic analysis of tumor cells is just beyond belief. The revolution Dr. Janet Rowley is talking about will change the way physicians practice medicine and may change the course of therapy for cancer patients and how they fare. More than one million cases of cancer will be diagnosed this year, but researchers are unveiling exciting advances in this week's Journal of the American Medical Association. It's all with the help of genetic technology. The uh, genes that we have recently identified through our research will allow improved diagnosis, more accurate diagnosis of the type of tumor that a patient has, and also through understanding of those genes will give us clues uh, as to better treatment. The advances are especially prominent in leukemia, but researchers have new insight into cancers with a familial link like breast cancer. For the first time, we really have uh, reliable methods for predicting which patients may develop a cancer, and this can be done exceedingly early in life but doctors are continuing their search to pinpoint the gene. By contrast, in some forms of leukemia, researchers have successfully located genes which provide information about diagnosis and prognosis. These advances are the result of applying genetic tests to genes which researchers have identified. The tests are so sensitive, they can detect one cancer cell out of 100,000 total cells. That makes for early diagnosis and will help physicians tailor therapy for each patient. Despite the advances, researchers remain cautious. More patients need to be followed to determine whether these tests will actually help prolong life. Still, it's an important step to identify and treat a deadly and costly disease. In Chicago, I'm Kathleen Quinn reporting. Still to come tonight, singing the blues to make others happy. We'll explain later. But up next, we begin our series, Hair Today, Gone Tomorrow. You may not believe that some of the celebrities you'll see are going bald. Dodge Intrepid more spacious, we move the wheels that normally go here, out, and back to here. Up front, the wheels that were here were moved out to here. It's a concept called cab forward that yields astonishing room for people like me. While good things like wider doors, sports car handling, and superb aerodynamics came along for the ride. Dodge Intrepid. This changes everything. preservatives, colors, or flavors. Nature's own, at last, our daily bread. If you're losing your hair or know someone who is, listen to this. Tonight, we begin a three-part series on baldness. We'll look at what causes baldness and options available for thinning hair, options you probably don't know about. Tonight, Nightside reporter Dan Fagan tells us about some celebrities whose hair is not their own on the first installment of Hair Today, gone tomorrow. Ego, Captain? 
We each have our reasons, Victor. Sean Connery, recently voted sexiest man in America. But come on, is that really his hair? Your favorite action hero, Batman, can't possibly be losing his hair. Have you ever met a man who gave you the hots more than me? America's most famous ladies' man, Sam Malone, would never wear a rug. Join Diane Sawyer and me next Thursday evening. Sam Donaldson, hard-hitting journalist. You know that's his hair. If you think these guys all have full, natural heads of hair, I'm sorry, you are incorrect. These guys have all found answers to their balding heads. But why even try? When you think about it, is it really that important to have a full head of hair? I asked some experts. I'd rather date somebody with hair. <laughs> why is that? Um, I don't know. A bald person's probably old. Girls look for more attractive guys, and usually guys with more hair in the front are more attractive. Guys with um, no hair in their head usually have hairy chest. And you like that? No. It doesn't matter. Does that matter to you at all? Come on then. I wouldn't date one. <laughs> Baldness bigotry doesn't bother Scene Tretrelli. He's been losing his hair since he was a teen. He says having a full head of hair is overrated. It's just your hair. It's just your hair. I mean, it sits on top of your head. I mean, who cares? But how would you rather look? Like this or like this? Most balding men don't do anything about their condition because they aren't aware of the options available. Now, most of the balding men that I've talked to say that they've just learned to accept their thinning hair. The reason they say there's nothing worse than having a toupee, and everyone knows you have a toupee. But there are a lot of new advances in hair technology today that a lot of people don't know about. Tomorrow night on Hair, hair Today, Gone Tomorrow, we'll tell you about it. Back to you. Thank you very much, Dan. That's a report that a lot of people can identify with. Well, Dan's going to do something interesting on Friday. What can we expect on Friday, Dan? You still out there? I'm here. I'm here. What can we uh, expect on Friday? Well, uh, as you can see, I have thinning hair myself. So we're going to talk to a uh, local hair replacement expert here in Lafayette, and we're going to see what she can do for my thinning hair. That'll be Friday night at 10. Okay, thank you, Dan. I think Dan looks fine. Just so I, I never mean, noticed. No, I don't, I don't notice that type of stuff. I you really don't? No. Good. That makes me feel a lot better. I really better. haven't, but I, I, you know, whatever makes you happy. I, I, it'll be interesting to see Dan go through this process Yeah, it's going to be Friday night at uh, 10 o'clock, and uh, it, they say that you don't look that much different if you do it gradually, and we'll find out. I know. I'm looking forward to it. Well, coming up, Nelson will have much more on our weather. And uh, also tonight, uh, we'll have your winning lotto numbers. In fact, here they are. Well, good evening, Acadiana. You're taking a look at the uh, wildlife, uh, what was it, the Wetland Center, I think, here in uh, Research Park next to USL. And, of course, you can't see the skies out there, but they are clear. There's a beautiful moon out there as well. We'll be looking for cool temperatures for that reason. Take a look at your current conditions this hour. Temperature under clear skies at 54 degrees. The dew point temperature at 49. It gives us a relative humidity of 86%. Our barometer is rising through 30.26 inches of mercury. And we have a northeasterly wind at 8 miles per hour. Today's high temperature is somewhat cool, 65 degrees. The morning low, 52. You know, we collected no rainfall. The records for this date, 90 degrees, your record high dating back to 1914. The record low of 25 degrees dates back to 1920. Let's go ahead and move on and talk about Las Vegas. Got a lot of calls tonight, people headed out there for the football game this weekend. And it is indeed going to be chilly. Actually, tomorrow if you arrive in the afternoon, temperature around 66 degrees. But over the weekend, temperatures will become a little chilly as they are expecting a couple of cold fronts to move across that region of the country. So through the weekend, look for highs to be near 60, maybe slightly warmer than that. Uh, during game day on Saturday, 62, uh, overnight lows in the upper 30s to the low 40s, but I know that most everyone going to the game will be just outside for that. You'll be inside uh, the rest of the time. Behave yourselves. <laughs> Let's take a look at what's going on around here. This is an image actually from yesterday, and of course the severe weather brought about by a strong upper level low. 
It has progressed rapidly toward the east, and this was last night about 10 o'clock as the line of thunderstorms continued to move off toward the uh, east to northeast. They've had pretty active weather down along the Gulf Coast early today around Florida, but this feature itself is moving rapidly toward the northeast now and out of our hair. But notice the cloud cover has been on the increase across the western states. A subtropical jet stream upper level high level winds pulling in some high clouds which have already appeared around portions of texas and we still have some clouds lingering around the state at this hour mainly around areas of extreme northern louisiana as the backwash or wraparound moisture associated with this low continues to kind of swing down toward the southeast now we're not going to be seeing a whole lot of cloud cover that will be producing precipitation over the next few days this is the low clouds kind of hanging around washita parish in uh, northeast louisiana which will pull off to the northeast and while this looks rather thick back to the west of us it's mainly high clouds up around 25 30,000 feet the atmosphere just a little too dry to produce any precipitation a few of these will be streaming across the area tomorrow but we'll indeed be looking for a nice day under mostly sunny skies a cool night in store for all louisiana here in acadiana overnight lows down into the mid 40s you'll be looking for a dry pattern to remain and notice a warm front beginning to develop to the north of us that's because southwesterly winds will return just west of us during the day tomorrow and actually precede this front that move, will move rapidly across the Katy on a Friday night and Saturday. Now, rapid improvement will be seen in the sea state as well. Northerly winds early at 15 to 20 knots, but improving quickly. Seas at 4 to 6 feet in the morning, down to around 2 to 4 by tomorrow afternoon. Fair and cool tonight, an overnight low of 45 degrees with light northerly winds to around 10 miles per hour. Then during the day tomorrow, a few high clouds around, but mostly sunny and mild. A high of 65, as those clouds reflect a little bit of sun, uh, incoming sunshine. Uh, northeasterly winds at 10 miles per hour are continuing, and the pattern here remains dry. We are expecting a cool front, and you'll notice that the temperatures actually will be on their way down as the front moves on through Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So it must be nice these days in the uh, weather department without having all nice these weather quiet. bulletins. Yes, yes I imagine quiet. it is. Thank you, Nelson. Okay. Well, stay tuned. Mac will be up next with sports. Action 3 Weather's five-day forecast has been brought to you by Lowe's. Hi, everybody. I'm Mac McCullough with Sports. If the Raging Cajun football team had any inkling of overconfidence going into this Saturday's Big West contest with UNLV, one of the last two weeks have taken care of that. Of course, it was two weeks ago the Raging Cajuns were hammered by Florida 61-14. But at the same time, a 1-7 Rebel team has seemed to have found their stride, putting together back-to-back -to -back road wins over Louisiana Tech and San Jose State. Seems like uh, every time we play someone, they found themselves. You know, San Jose, when we played them, you know, after a tough start, they came off of two conference wins. Uh, UN UNLV had a tough start. They're coming off of two conference wins now. So, you know, maybe that's good. Maybe the fact that, that we know they can play and they've got a lot of talent and ability uh, uh, mean that we're going to go down there and play hard now. Well, we're going to go in there, you know, establish a run, and then uh, off the run, we'll have a lot of play fakes and we'll throw the ball like we've been doing. Uh, they're a very talented defense. Just They'll play good one game and they'll play bad other games. You know, hopefully they'll have a bad game Saturday. <laughs> the all-time series between USL and UNLV runs only two games with the Raging Cajuns winning both the previous meetings. Now, to pro football, this Monday night's game between the Saints and the 49ers will be the 49th meeting between those two teams. San Francisco has just a slight advantage in the overall series. They've won 32. New Orleans has won just 14, and they have been two ties. If you're looking for a key to Monday night's game, you might want to look at the turnover. The Saints had a plus 10 takeaway margin during their first five weeks when they were 5-0, and but over the last four games, they've been minus eight, which means they've given up the ball eight more times than they've taken it away. When you turn it over as many times as we did, I'm not quite sure how many times you turn it over. It's, it's difficult to win football games. Uh, the takeaway-giveaway ratio is a, is a big factor and a, and a definite uh, has a definite effect on the outcome of the game. If we don't turn the ball over where they have a short field, uh, we score more points, definitely field goals and possibly touchdowns, but you know, we turn the ball over, and anytime you turn it over more than your opponent, you're nine times out of ten, you're going to lose. 
And if you total them up, the Saints still have a plus two ratio, 20 takeaways, 18 giveaways. Their opponent, the 49ers, dead even, 16 takeaways, 16 giveaways. Over to college basketball, USL picked up the signature of another highly sought after forward today as they received the letter of intent from Eric Rideau. Rideau was 6'8", supposedly a banger on the boards. He'll come to the Cajuns from nationally ranked Chipola Junior College, where he averaged 12 points, six rebounds a game. Tonight was the first night of action in college basketball. Sunbelt Conference member Western Kentucky went into the Dean Dome and gave defending champion, national champion, North Carolina one heck of a game. The Hilltoppers climbed to within five points with three minutes to play, and it looked like they might be ready for the upset, but Carolina showed why they're number one. Too much power, they pull away to win by 14 in the final. 101-87. Elsewhere around the top 25, the NIT. It was Cincinnati knocking off Butler. And in the second half, Kansas has a comfortable lead over Western Michigan. In soccer, the final nine qualifying spots were filled today for the 2014 World Cup field that will come to the United States in 1994. Now, as host nation, USA is already in the field, as well as the defending champion, Germany. But you see the rest of the team. Maybe uh, more notable about the field, the team's not in. England and France failed to make the cut, so the hooligans won't come to the United States. And finally, the fishing forecast, fishing game forecast, best time to be out there, 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. All right, so no hooligans coming for the soccer. I know everybody's worried about that, but... There are some people out there worried. <laughs> All right, thanks, Max. And we'll be right back. A somewhat cooler forecast. Yes, the overnight low tonight of 45 degrees. As you look at the five day, there'll be a few high clouds around tomorrow, high of 65. Good news is it will be dry through the next five days. All right, thank you, Nelson. And finally, tonight, have you ever been to a Zydeco food drive? If not, you missed your chance tonight to hear good music and help the less fortunate. El Cido Zydeco and Blues Club held its sixth annual Thanksgiving Zydeco food drive tonight. For a small donation, along with several canned goods, participants enjoyed several blues and Zotico bands. All proceeds and canned goods will go to needy families throughout southwest Louisiana. And that's our news tonight. We thank you for watching. Good night, everyone.